Welcome to the second ever What the Flick. Uh, I am your host, Jane Huger, along with Matt Atchity from Rotten Tomatoes, as usual. And today, filling in for Ben Mankiewicz, who's actually working for Turner Classic Movies right now, is Christy Lemire, the Hi. film critic for the Associated Press. Hello. Christy, it's awesome to have you. I'm so psyched to be here. Thank huh. you for asking. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> All right. We're going to review uh, two movies uh, today. One is Cop Out, which is in the theaters now, and the other is The Informant, which is out on DVD now. That's uh, starring Matt Damon. Uh, of course, we'll start with Cop Out, and Matt's going to explain it to you. So Cop Out is a buddy cop movie kind of based on a lot of what we saw in the 80s. It stars Bruce Willis, who did cop movies in the 80s, and Tracy Morgan, who did not, uh, <laughs> because he was a bit young, probably. Um, directed by Kevin Smith, which they haven't really promoted a lot of, um, and may come as a surprise to some people, and Kevin Smith fans may or may not like this movie. So the movie's about a couple of policemen that have been partners for nine years, and they get suspended for messing up a bust, and because they're suspended, Bruce Willis is worried about how he's gonna pay for his daughter's wedding, and so he decides to sell a baseball card, which gets stolen, and it becomes this somewhat farcical story about whether or not they can find the baseball card. There's a drug dealer involved, and he wants to make a trade, and that's it. <laughs> you know, and it's really, it's the, Movie, it's the 80s cop movie, cliche Rama. Now, I'm going to start with a question for you guys right off the bat. Maybe I'm a little dense. And, and by the way, so everybody knows, Kevin Smith didn't write the movie, which is Correct. unusual for him, right? So, uh, is this like Scary Movie? Is this, I mean, it's supposed to be a send-up of 48 Hours and Beverly Hills Cop and all, all of those movies, right? Uh, or is it supposed to be just one of those movies? Christy, what it, do you think? It is an homage. To use a word they use a lot in Cop Out, homage, as right. Tracy Morgan uses right. it. The homage. Yeah, uh, the it, homage. You have to pronounce the H. It's homage. a homage. Like the Hobbit. No, it's, it's an homage. It's not like an over-the-top kind of parody like date movie where there's just ridiculous, like, scatological and physical humor or whatever. But it's a lot of geekery, a lot of, like, 80s movie geekery that... Again, like there's a Harold Faltermeyer score, the guy who did Axel F, the guy who did the Fletch score. And so if you love these 80s right. buddy cop movies, you're going to go, oh, yeah, Harold Faltermeyer. Right, to the point that Tracy Morgan will say which lines he's doing, which movies he's doing lines from. And that's actually a problem. Right. Yeah, there's, a, there's right. a whole scene in the beginning where he's, like, shaking down some guy in the interrogation room. And he's quoting, like, Scarface and Heat. But instead of giving us the, the benefit of the doubt of knowing, okay, we probably know these references, Bruce Willis is there going, ah, oh, now you're just doing Al Pacino and Heat. Like, that's how dumb the movie is. It bangs you over the head with its own references. Uh-oh. I sense uh, uh, somebody who didn't <laughs> buy the movie is that much. All right, look, let me just say first, it, don't ex it, it's both surprising and unsurprising, okay, if, from my point of view. But, uh, number one, it's unsurprising in that it is exactly what you think it is, okay? There's a, uh, an older cop and a younger cop, a black cop and a white cop, and the one of them is, you know, oh, I can't take this shit right, anymore. Right. It's, what, right, it's, you what know? Ebert, it's what Roger Ebert calls the ones a movie, right? Ones of this, <laughs> ones of that. <laughs> right. And then what I was like, I'm waiting for the captain, the captain that gets angry at them and starts yelling at them, and I'm like, oh, no, don't do it, don't do it, and he does it, right? So, But they're doing it on purpose, in, in an yeah. homage, if you will, right? So, it, but what surprised me, Christy, and I think you're going to disagree with this, is that I didn't think, I, I was expecting it to be the worst movie of the year, right. and I don't think it was, but there's some chance you thought it was. No, 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 not, I see a lot of movies, this is not the <laughs> worst, Tooth Fairy is worse than this, When in Rome is worse than this. There are some funny moments here and there. Tracy Morgan just showing up and right. being Tracy Morgan is entertaining. But what's weird about this movie is it is like simultaneously lazy and frantic. Like the entire script is just a bunch of pop culture references, whatever, and they're just selling it so hard. They are working so hard to make those jokes funny, and they're not. But, I, I, but I will, Matt, you, you didn't mind it, did you? You know, I didn't mind it. it it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I, I, wouldn't reg I don't regret going to see it. I thought it was funny. I was laughing. You guys probably heard me. I was laughing in the theater. I thought it was, and again, a lot of that is Tracy Morgan. A lot of it is Bruce Willis kind of having that winking style to him. And, and really, in the right role, even if he's kind of phoning it in in a movie like this, it's Bruce Willis kind of being Bruce Willis, and that's fun. If you're going to see a movie that's kind of trying to be a cop movie and an action movie while still kind of making fun of those movies, the better movie to see is Hot Fuzz, and this is no Hot Fuzz. I love Hot Fuzz. And Hot Fuzz is a so great funny. movie. But it has a, a more dry British wit to it, which right. makes it 
funny and charming and not like banging you over the head with, hey, we're funny, come laugh at us. Right. And I know I keep quoting other critics. This one, to me, fails what I think it was Gene Siskel would say, you know, is this movie better? Would this, be, would this movie be any better than watching these actors sitting around having dinner? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. It's right on the border with me. I mean, Sean William Scott is kind of funny, although weird in this movie. You know, Guillermo have, Diaz, who is getting a little hefty in his old age, who I think is funny. You know, it's got a great cast. Um, Kevin Pollack, who I know you know and have had uh -huh. fun with. Um, but, you know, it's okay. It's, it's, not, it's not terrible, you know, it, right. but it's not memorable. And I guess that's, to me, I guess I'm damning it with faint praise. It's, 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 a th it's a throwaway movie. You know, in a year from now, you're like, oh, right, those guys did Hot Fuzz. I mean, those guys did cop out. Cop out, yeah. right? You I can't already see. forget. I've already <laughs> forgotten. Them. I've already forgotten. Them. All right, now I'm sitting between these two, and I could sense I'm trying not to get influenced, right? Uh, Matt's laughing, right? And Chrissy's like, <laughs> right? And I'm trying not to get influenced. And now I'm also influenced by my own bias because I'm thinking uh, this is going to be the worst. I went in going thinking that I like, why do we we have to watch this movie, right? But I was surprised. I didn't hate it. And I thought there were funny parts. Uh, you know, Tracy Morgan is way over the top. Uh, but, you know, there was a little of, you know, I lost my leg in Vietnam. <laughs> and I was like, all right, okay, I kind of <laughs> like this. So, you know what, I wound up giving it, a, you know, a, a 5.8, which is pretty high. It's much higher. Like, to give you a sense of the ratings, you know, under 5, and I would say, just don't waste your time seeing it, right? It, it, between 5 and 6, you know, it's on HBO, or you get a DVD, it's not going to hurt you. Uh, for me, 8 is a movie you should see, 9 is awesome, etc. So at a 5.8, I'm surprised that I'm above 5, and, I, and I'm liking it. But I like Tracy Morgan a lot. I thought Bruce Willis was less over the top than he can be. Uh, but I, I thought Sean William Scott was awesome. I thought he was almost worth watching the whole movie for. <laughs> I know he was really weird. But he was supposed to be really weird. Right. I thought he stole the movie. It's a totally annoying shtick he's doing the whole way through where he's like repeating whatever everybody else is saying to him. Like, I know you are, but what am I? I know. St right. Stop talking. Stop talking. Right. And it's like, it's okay. like he's being Pee Wee Herman. Right. They do it once. That's maybe funny. They do it like 18 times in this movie, and it's ridiculous. No, sometimes <laughs> repetitive humor takes a while. Like, it's funny the first time, not funny the second or the third time. But the eighth and ninth time, it comes back to being funny. Eighth and ninth time. We need eight <laughs> and nine times. That's my Because we're dumb. There you go. So how much did you hate it by then? Um, what? Numerically, how much did I hate yes. it? Yes. I'm giving it a 1.5. It gets a 0.5 from me because of Tracy Morgan. I laughed at a couple of things here and there. There's a couple of little Fletch references that, that I found amusing, whatever. Um, you mentioned that this is a rare thing for Kevin Smith to direct someone else's script. It's actually the first time he directed somebody else's script. And uh, it's very Kevin Smithy though, at the same time. It's totally profane, it's talky. Jason Lee is in it. Right. A lot of movie geek references, but still, I don't think Kevin Smith fans are gonna like this very much either. I love how Tracy Morgan is pretty good. He gets a .5 addition to the <laughs> score of one. <laughs> and you wanna talk about damning with faint praise. See, I'm, I'm giving it probably the highest score out of the group, although not much higher than yours. I'm giving it a six. I, I think it was an okay movie. I would rather have seen Kevin Smith direct something he wrote. I feel like Kevin Smith could do better with action sequences. I felt like the action, what little action there was, wasn't really that exciting. Um, but it's okay. You know, it, it, and part of that is in looking at the other movies that are out right now, you know, you, you, it'd be all right. If you're a Kevin Smith fan, if you like Tracy Morgan, if you like Bruce Willis, you won't be that disappointed. Yeah, I love that. That the conclusion is. There's your blurb. The, yeah. exactly. You won't be that disappointed. If, if you like these guys, uh, this is what you'll like. So what's our average here? Let's take a look at the average. It uh, appears to be a 4.4 because Christy brought it yes. way down. I dragged it down, you and I'll do it, it again if I have to. <laughs> dragged it down below the 5. Gleefully. Uh, magical 5. <laughs> All right, so there's your cop-out review. Uh, now uh, let's... Uh, Go to a DVD release, The Informant, starring Matt Damon. What was that about, Matt? So The Informant is the story of Mark Whitaker, who worked for Archer, da Archer Daniels Midland and was working on their lysine business, which is a food additive that is made from corn and goes into just about everything. And there was a possible FBI investigation about something else. And when the FBI came in, he promptly blew the whistle about price fixing. Um, which the FBI then puts him to work as an informant, and you kind of see a complete mental breakdown of Matt Damon's character, Mark Whitaker. 
This is based on a novel, uh, and it was directed by Steven Soderbergh. And uh, a lot of people didn't see it, um, didn't get really probably the attention it deserved. The uh, tomato meter for the movie was 85%. It was certified fresh, one of our higher accolades. Uh, the critics loved the movie for the most part, um, but the audience just wasn't there. And it's one of those things that I think we had discussed talking about it on today's show so that people would really get out and see it. It's a great performance. I'll just jump in with my review. It's a great performance by Matt Damon. Fantastic. And it's a, it's at, you know, equally, it's at the same time hilarious and horrifying seeing what Whitaker does. You know, they talk about later in the film that he's uh, diagnosed with bipolar disorder and you really see this and I can only describe it as a mental breakdown. He starts making things up. And the ultimate part of this story, and probably everybody knows this by now, is as he was blowing the whistle and as he was serving as an informant, he was embezzling from ADM. And he ended up doing more jail time, three times as much jail time, as any of the executives that were indicted in the price fixing. And there are people who, you know, some of the agents that he worked with will swear up and down that he was the hero of that story. And it's a terrible miscarriage of justice that you know, he ended up doing so much time. I, I, of course, love that theme, the theme of uh, the little guy versus the powerful, and unfortunately, the powerful always win, right? Now, there's some nuances to it, and there's some twists and turns in that story, so you got to see how, how it turns out. But, uh, you know, as you see uh, the big guys getting away with it, you're pulling your hair out. So it had a, had a good theme, obviously, and I thought it was funny and great acting, Matt Damon, etc., but, you know, the thing that stopped me from loving it, Christy, is that I didn't feel like, I, as great as Matt Damon was in the movie, and I, you know, that I didn't get a true sense of why, what's this guy's motivation? Why is he doing what he's doing? He's so quirky that I, I didn't have a full grasp of it. I think that was the only thing that I was a little hesitant about the movie. But it becomes clear, I think, at the end, when you, when you know what the deal is. And what I love about the informant for the whole way through is that you don't know what the deal is. You don't know whether he's just a regular guy who gets in over his head, whether he has you know, delusions of grandeur of being this super spy. He calls himself 0014. Right. He's twice as smart as 007. Or whether he really is a, a devious and duplicitous guy. You don't know the whole way through. But you do find out at the end, and I think that is the payoff, and that is what you refer to as horrifying when you discover what the truth is, what's going on with him psychologically. Um, what I thought the weak link was, was his wife, because mm -hmm. you don't know what she knows and when she knows it. She's this doting, docile, perfect suburban housewife, and you wonder, how far is she in well, this, too? And one of the things that I actually feel was somewhat of a miss in this movie, and I felt would have actually added to it, and I'm somewhat surprised that they left it out, is that the reason he went to the FBI in reality, the reason Whitaker in reality went to the FBI about the price fixing was he was pressured from his wife. And she had oh. said to him that if you don't go to the FBI, I'm going. Right, now that was, again, that, that. Was, that, that was hinted at in the movie, but, and you're right about the ending, it's just, I felt there was something missing. Like yeah. I wanted to know more about what motivated him, even, even at the end. Yeah. So, but having said that, I, I really liked the movie. It was very enjoyable. Uh, Matt Damon had a great performance. I thought he should have been nominated for uh, uh, Best Actor. Though. I agree, actually. I'm somewhat surprised he didn't get nominated. You know, he put on a bunch of weight for the role. He really kind of, you know, moved away from that pretty boy persona, the action hero, you know, the good-looking guy. Like, he really is playing a character here. And, and you really, he, he kind of disappears into the role, which I thought was really impressive. You know who, who, who remi he reminded me of in that movie? I don't know if you guys get this. But Brad Pitt in Burn After Reading. <laughs> that had a similar, like, almost over-the-top uh, kind of mm -hmm. character, really quirky character. And, and I love Brad Pitt in that uh, role, too. So it, at the end, uh, you know, I got to say, I gave, I gave the movie a 7.5. I mean, I, I was tempted to go all the way to 8, <laughs> okay? But because I, I thought it wasn't quite there, but if, I think if you rent this movie, at, at this point, obviously, set on DVD, I think you're going to be, you know... Not pleasantly surprised, but just happy with it. I think that's a hell of a DVD rental. So I, I went all the way up to a 7.5. Maybe I'm underselling it, Matt. <laughs> um, I, I'm a little bit over it, then a uh, little bit over your score. I gave it an 8. Uh, I think it's a fantastic movie. I think it's a little bit something different than we've seen out of Steven Soderbergh. Uh, and I almost feel like, based partly it's the score and the title cards you kept seeing, mm -hmm. I felt like, and maybe you're going to know what I'm going to say, I felt like it was Soderbergh almost channeling Blake Edwards. There were times in this movie that it almost felt like a Blake Edwards movie in that some of the stuff that Whitaker does 
and some of the twists and turns and his reactions to things, and he'll say these things that are just jaw dropping. That it's you know he the for instance the amount of money that he keeps embezzling keeps changing, and he'll talk to the feds, he'll be talking to the FBI, and he's the one saying a higher number, you know, or his lawyer at some point comes in and does this amazing performance, which again happened in real life, saying to the Department of Justice that here's a guy that you guys used for three years with no training, going undercover, of course he cracked, of course he cracked, of course he was going to embezzle and really start losing himself, you have to take it easy on him. And they offered him a plea bargain. And Whitaker himself says, oh no, I don't want that. We're going to fight it. And yeah. hires some personal injury lawyer who, who shows up, you know, and then you see him in the movie show up to meet with the DOJ in a Hawaiian shirt. And I'm thinking, oh, it's just... You but know, that's it, the thing, though. I mean, it was he was so quirky that he was bordering on dumb, and that's what like I couldn't tell if he was dumb or not. He got hired to be a CEO. Well, I believe, and that's later. what I thought was great about in real it, life is that it was you know this kind of insanity, and it and this happened, and that's what I that's what really sold me on. I like that it happened, and that Soderbergh made it a comedy. He didn't make it a really serious action thriller drama like The Insider or well, even his own Aaron Brockovich or whatever. It's a comedy, and it's like a 70s-style comedy. I love the way it's shot. It's sort of these faded kind of beiges with like really heavy backlighting. The Marvin Hamlish score makes it feel very right. 70s. I love that about it. And also just the interior monologue, which makes a lot more sense upon a second viewing as yeah. far as giving you a clue as to his true mental state. And it's just totally... I mean, bizarre observations on, like, the word for tuna in Japanese right. and uh, the <laughs> word for pen in German and these non sequiturs that come out of nowhere. But then you realize upon second viewing, wow, okay, this is a clue. Well, and what I thought was great, and I don't want to spoil anything, but it's, it's not so much that the voiceover is a narration so much as it's a real-time, kind of a real-time thought process, which is fascinating to me. Once I figured that out, that it it really changes the mood, and again, and to your point about it being a comedy, I'm not sure you could go any other way with that story. I mean, if, if it you could look have been at, like the Insider, though. well, right, but and you know, wasn't. but if you went with something like the Insider, it's there's no way to play off your your character, your informant acting so crazy. I don't mm -hmm. think you could, you know, ha unless you go, yeah. I mean, I guess you could, you know, if you went with like a Shutter Island type of thing where. You know, <laughs> is he crazy? Or not? Is he crazy or not? Right? But. Yeah, I, I hear you. And you know, Chrissy makes a really good point about the dialogue. You know, it's the kind of movie that you can see twice, which is then you know that that's pretty high praise for a movie to say that you can see it twice because it has such good dialogue and and such good acting by Matt Damon. What was your final score on it? I gave it an eight. I really liked it, and I thought it got massively overlooked. I'm guessing it's because of subject matter. No one could get their hands around what is this thing. It's a comedy, but it's about lysine. Right. I mean, I, and people didn't see it, which is a bummer, and Matt Damon was great in it. So. All right, so then it's an easy uh, DVD rental uh, because, I mean, we're all the way up to an average of 7.8 on it, which is a pretty damn high score, and I, I almost gave it the same exact thing as you guys did, and, uh, and we seem to have a lot of high praise for it. So, apparently, go see the informant. Okay, or go rent it. Uh, now, uh, next week, Ben is going to be back, uh, and uh, we are going to review Alice in Wonderland and Brooklyn's Finest, which has Ethan Hawke, Wesley Snipes, Don Chadle, Richard Gere. Uh, I'm looking forward to kind of an internal affairs uh, kind of feel to the movie. I don't know, maybe I'm hyping it too much already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but Chrissy, thank you so much for joining us. We, we loved you coming on here. Thanks. So. And, last. I appreciate it. Yeah, and we'll have to do it again. Uh, when I'm out of town, probably Chrissy will fill, me, fill in for me. All right, so uh, that's what we got for you today on What the Flick. We'll see you next week.